What's up guys, Cloakfin here again and today we're going to be, well I'm going to be going over kind of my basic kind of clean up and acetoning procedure on this kind of Bichon Freeze dog that someone asked me to make for them. I might be putting in like a circular kind of container, like a hidden container in it as well which I'm not sure how I'm going to do that because I didn't model it but never mind we'll get around to that later and I'm going to also show you the salt method because I don't think enough people talk about the salt method it's like when you print a massive object or something with a large kind of base onto the plate and then after it's finished printing it just comes off naturally without having to peel it or use glue or anything like that salt is just like a really nice method for doing that now because it's like a super hot day it's like 30 degrees out there I'm in England I'm sweating my balls off and I really can't be bothered to go in the house out the house get salt water and all that stuff I'm just going to show you like the residue, which is this stuff here, like like this is salt basically, right? It's like um, I think molden salt flakes I used. And basically you just get like a, a, a glass of water, you don't need a lot of water. And then keep throwing in the salt until it's completely saturated. After that you basically get a little towel or a rug or something like that. Dip it in and just literally keep wiping over once and then maybe another time, let it dry, do it again. So when you start printing, it all goes fine as long as it's not tiny bits that are really tall because then they're prone to getting knocked over, which is when the glue's useful. This is my Bichon Freeze model, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do for cleanup is I get rid of the skirt lines and all the kind of the, the manual support that I've put in, which is under here. And I've just done that because uh, I find that automatic supports kind of, they, they, it's just they take too long to print for me. I, I, I saved about, I think, 9 to 11 hours by doing my own supports, which are essentially just lines of support. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to clean this all up now, and then uh, I'll show you how I get rid of my other lines. But it's going to be using the burr tool, similar to the way I've done my shark. So I'll just kind of fast forward with this. Now, if you want to kind of just clean up the edges, like in the other video I've done, I'll show you. It's, you kind of get rid of flashes and stuff like that when you buy like kit models. You just kind of run the side of your knife along the edge just to smooth it out, basically, because you're not going to have much luck cutting it. You'll probably end up cutting into the plastic. This way, you're literally just scraping it away. You can do sandpaper as well if you want, but this is more exact because obviously you're just using the one very, very, very fine flat edge of a knife. So just go around like that, just go around wherever you feel. Because you're also making it slightly smoother to when it sits down so you don't have such a hard edge that ends up getting chipped on stuff anyway, so. Now, I've made loads of these weird straight line supports in my model just to save time. Now, you can use scissors or clippers or whatever to cut through them, but they might cut into your model so what I do is I tend to just get a, a burr tool a really thin one and then obviously because it spins so quick it will just melt the plastic in between and then every time it gets too clogged up I'll just like wipe the the burr on the wood so I'll show you how I do that now basically now I just remind you wear some eye protection whenever you're doing any kind of like rotary sanding or drilling because bits of plastic are prone to fly out just thought I'd add that in there so I'm just going to see if I can cut through. The lump's gone so it's gone so big on here that it's starting to cut cut into the plastic so I'll show you close up what it looks like. So there's the kind of lump of plastic that gets get stuck at the end and uh, I'll just show you what it kind of what paste to go at to get rid of it. So first turn it on and then just kind of wipe it off but
and there you go it's all gone nice and clean no problem so that's how you clean it without any problems but again if you push too hard you're gonna snap it off when it's anyway so this is kind of uh, what we're left with with all the kind of cutting out the, the supports so now essentially oh, I forgot to do that one but that's not a problem oh, I've got the other one still to completely finish but whatever you get the idea and um, then afterwards we're essentially gonna get, use some more burr tools to kind of go down into them and kind of round them out all right so I'm gonna swap this little one for a slightly bigger one because I just want to kind of essentially go around and carve all that stuff off there we go all right and uh, I'm just going to basically go around smoothing out all of this the beauty of the burr tool is that you can do it really slowly I forgot to put my glasses on the bigger burr tool you use, by the way, the more bits of plastic fly in your face, so try and remember that. I forgot to actually say that the bigger the burr tool, the less likely it is to melt. So um, it just goes a lot easier. It's really nice. You can just flatten these out really quickly, um, as opposed to with a knife or something. It just goes down. So there's there's no melting at all at the end of that. So I'm just going to go quite quickly actually. All right. So after about 20 minutes of um, sanding and using the Dremel I've kind of pretty much there so um, I got rid of all the supports there then I had some supports between the legs because obviously the legs are islands and if the print heads moving it there's a chance of it getting knocked over and then that again supported uh, one of the legs as well but anyway um, I'm gonna basically uh, acetone it now, maybe give it a bit more of a sand. I've sanded the top so the end stops are gonna be a bit smoother and um, obviously everywhere else where I was doing a bit of Dremel work. But apart from that, I think it came out all right. Now, um, <coughs> you generally don't want to, uh, you wanna be doing this in a open area as well. So what I do is I pour a bit of the acetone in here, close that up or leave it open or whatever and I should really be wearing gloves but again whatever I'm just gonna soak the brush in this stuff I really dropped some on there and then now essentially I'm just gonna try and go over it as quickly as possible I know I've kind of shouldn't have not worn gloves but whatever sometimes when you're doing these tutorials things just happen Um, yeah so that's that so pretty much that's what it kind of starts going to look like and um, what I do now is generally I kind of I just get a kind of plastic brush just to get any kind of particles out of there and stuff like that and it kind of smooths it up a bit as well now I just want to say that because it's like so hot outside um, I didn't I've never really kind of done acetoning in this kind of heat so uh, all the acetone in fact I think rather than soaking on the model it's kind of evaporated off and kind of pooled in loads of areas so um it's not ideal but i have kind of sanded over a little bit kind of the bits where i've noticed it kind of pooling and kind of leaving in too much of an indentation like here like in the plastic so just be careful of that all right so this is the dog how it kind of turned out with its acetony nature and stuff so i'm just going to basically spray this with um my favorite quick surface primer which is this Tamiya one it's the Tamiya grey surface primer it's not the super fine one I think it's just L what that means but anyway let's see what that looks like <clears throat> kick the door open alright I'm going to leave it come back in a bit 
What's up guys? So basically um, I sprayed it grey, came back to it and saw that there were still some kind of subtle lines and patches from where the acetone had dissolved too quickly. So I kind of just gave it sand, sprayed over and I kind of this is where it is now. Now I've also drilled a hole in the bottom of it and I, I, I slotted in a container because I'm going to turn, this is now going to be an urn so it's going to be like a dog urn. And um, I just made a simple mechanism where you just kind of, it's like a simple L basically. So something slots in and then I've got a little pot here that also has a lid to it. But I didn't want to print it with a flat bottom because of the bit sticking out there. So that kind of pops in the bottom like so. And that goes in like that, nice and tight. Doesn't even jiggle about. So um, yeah, it's really cool. So there, put your ashes in. If you can get the lid back on, it's quite tight fit though. But I prefer it to be kind of tight fitting and not kind of jiggling about than anything else. So um, there you go. That's what it's going to be. I'm going to spray it white now and uh, job done. So there's the final result. It's bottom. It goes back in there. It goes back. And there you go. Doggy.